It's new. It's amazing. It's Prell. P-R-E-L-L. Procter & Gamble's new radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. Prell brings you the life of Riley. <laughs> The shampoo that removes unsightly dandruff in as little as three minutes and leaves hair radiantly clean, radiantly lovely, presents The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, Thursday was Thanksgiving, as that fresh cranberry stain on your vest will indicate, and today we find Chester A. Riley thankful that it's all over. But a few days before Thanksgiving, Riley was singing a different tune as he was walking home from work with his friend, neighbor, and co-worker, Jim Gillis. Hey, wait, Gillis. Let's go down this street here. I got to pick up our Thanksgiving turkey at Al's Meat Market. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. My honeybee told me to pick ours up. Ah, great guy, Al. You know, in our house, all four of us like the drumstick, and nobody likes the, uh, uh, the whatchamacallit, so... This year, Al promised to give me a turkey with four drumsticks. <laughs> How is that possible? One turkey with four drumsticks? Yeah, well, with Al, it's easy. Some other customer will get a turkey with no drumsticks and two whatchamacallits. <laughs> you know, I love Thanksgiving, Gillis. Yeah, me too. It's nice to stay home and bask on the bosom of the family. Yeah, we're pretty lucky compared to other guys. We got something to be thankful for. After all, we've got our health. Yeah, that's something to be thankful for. We each got fine kids who were married to two fine, plain, home-loving girls. Yeah, that's something to be thankful for. You know, Gillis, we might have married a couple of flashy dames just for their looks. You know the type, those luscious blondes with those gorgeous figures, but we didn't. That's something to be thankful for. <laughs> and that ain't all. I'm thankful for the good friends I got. Like you, Gillis. A guy couldn't ask for no better friend than you. You're... You're wonderful. I love you too, Riley. <laughs> I feel like we're more than just friends. We're brothers. Oh, we're more than brothers. We're sisters. <laughs> Under the skin. I'll never forget what you did that time our house burned down and we had no place to live. Ah, what did I do? So I let your family live in my house for a couple of weeks. Any noble type person would have did the same. Yeah, but you only charged us $4 a day, the ceiling price. <laughs> well, one good thing to say is another. I was just paying you back for that time five years ago when I needed that blood transfusion to save my life. I'll never forget how you offered your blood. Oh, it was nothing... I just called up the blood bank and told them to give you a pint out of the quart I gave them. I, I know, Riley, but it ain't your blood. It's the thought behind it. Gillis, I got a great idea. Why don't you and the family have Thanksgiving dinner at our house? We'll all give thanks together. Hey, that's a super pipe idea. I'll bring over our turkey and all the trimmings. Great. Oh, boy, what a Thanksgiving we'll have. Two turkeys, two dishes of cranberry sauce, two boats of gravy, two pumpkin pies, two big cigars to smoke after dinner. And two wives to do the dirty dishes. Chester Riley, how could you go and invite the Gillises for Thanksgiving dinner without telling me? I'd like to feed my guests, and we've only got one small turkey. Relax, and never... Peg, relax. I also invited their turkey. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. No, it, it's not right to let guests bring food. Now, but we'll buy... Dublin, an... it's real holiday spirit. When we sit down to eat, it won't be their food or our food. It'll be all for one and everybody for himself. <laughs> we'll have fun. Oh, I don't mind Mr. Gillis, but Mrs. Gillis is an awful pill. Now, see here, Babs. You're talking about my best friend's wife. Honey Bee Gillis is not a pill. Mm, Bob's right. She's long and skinny. <laughs> She's more like a capsule. Oh, Junior. You watch that fresh talk, Junior. You ain't getting so big that I can't get your mother to spank you. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Pop, but that Egbert Gillis is murder. And when he sits down at the table, he eats like a wolf. I said stop it. Just remember, that wolf happens to be the cub of my best friend. <laughs> now, it's all settled. The Gillises are coming to dinner. My head's made up. Hey, hurry up, 
writing. We'll be late for work. So anyway, Gillis, when I told Peg and the kids that you and the family is coming over for Thanksgiving dinner, they was thrilled. You know what they said? How should I know what they said? I ain't the kind of a next-door neighbor goes around eavesdropping. Well, they said, Raleigh, that's a wonderful idea. Oh, fine. And tell Junior not to worry. I'll see that my egg bite don't eat like a wolf. <laughs> Gillis, you hurt. Well, ever since that cut-rate dentist filled my tooth with copper, my ears pick up like a radio. <laughs> now, come on. If we're late once more this month, the boss will blow his top. Oh, quit worrying. Mr. Stevenson went out of town for Thanksgiving. No, no. He's staying here. Only his family went away. The chauffeur told me. Oh, well, then we better snap it up. Hi, fellas. Hiya, Sharky. Hi. Heard the news? Botkin quit his job. You mean... You mean the foreman, Benzedrine Botkin? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Who's going to be the new foreman? Nobody knows yet. Stevenson is going to announce somebody after Thanksgiving. Oh, that's a great job. I wonder who's going to get it. Yeah, I wonder. Every guy in the plant is angling for it. All sorts of schemes going on. Well, I got to go, fellas. Hey, Sharky, what's that you got wrapped in that newspaper? Oh, this? Yeah. Just some petunias I picked for the boss's desk. <laughs> Ain't that disgusting, Riley? What some guys won't do just to butter up the bush. Positively <laughs> sickening. Now, me, I don't mind putting in eight hours of hard work for Stevenson, and I'll gladly work overtime for time and a half. <laughs> but when it comes to playing up to him, I draw the line. That's when I revolt. I'm with you, pal. I revolt, too. Yes, sir. We're both revolting. <laughs> Hello, Stevenson speaking. Hello, boss. This is Gillis. I just heard you're going to be a bachelor on Thanksgiving. Me and the family would love to have you break bread on us. Well, say, that's awfully nice of you, Gillis. I think I can... Uh, hold on a minute, will you? My other phone's ringing. Hello? Hello, boss. This is Riley. What are you doing for dinner on Thanksgiving? <laughs> invited Mr. Stevens? Well, sure. He'll let me know definite tomorrow, but he'll come. Yes, sir. I'm out to get that foreman's job, Dumplin', and this will cinch it. Oh, how? While you're stuffing his stomach with turkey, I'll be stuffing his head about how good I am. Oh, but you can't do that, especially with the Gillises here. Oh, the Gillises won't be here. I'll uninvite them. <laughs> well, you couldn't do that. It, it isn't fair. Yeah, I, I know. It's kind of a double cross, but this may be the break of my lifetime. And after all, I'm not double-crossing just anybody. I'm doing it to my best friend. <laughs> but, honey bee, don't you get it? I invite the big boss here to dinner, I get in good with him, and the next day I'm foreman. But you promised to go to the Riley. Oh, I'll get out of that pooch face. <laughs> this is a crucial thing. Now leave everything to me, vision of loveliness. <laughs> Hey, Riley Oh, hiya, Gillis I was just coming over to see you, pal I was just coming over to see you, Riley, my friend Uh, listen, chum uh, About this joint Thanksgiving dinner over at my joint I was thinking That's funny, Riley, so was I Yeah, I, I thought maybe we ought to call it off Oh, you was? Yeah, you, you see, Gillis I figured the best way to keep a friendship going Is not to get too friendly well, you got a good point there in your head. In fact, it's very dangerous to get together Thanksgiving. I can see just what's going to happen. You'll come over with your wife and Egbert and your turkey. And there's me and my wife and kids and our turkey. It's very crowded. Where am I sitting? On the piano stool. Very uncomfortable. And everybody's nerves is on edge. First thing you know, my junior says to your Egbert, Hey, Egghead, don't eat like a wolf. Yeah, and then my Egbert takes a poke at your junior and gives him a bloody nose. Right. And then my wife comes in, takes one look at Junior and yells, Junior, wipe that cranberry sauce off your face. But then she finds out what happened, so she turns on my honeybee. That's right. And Peg says, really, honeybee, you might teach that brat of yours some manners. And then naturally your honeybee turns on my Peg. Well, naturally. And she tells your wife off, but good. And then I got to stick up for Peg, so I say, pipe down, honeybee. You're nothing but a pill. And that gets you sore, Gillis. Why? That's what I always say. Oh, oh! Yeah, yeah. I'm burning up, so I say, see here, Riley, I'm the only one can insult my wife. And then I pick up a turkey leg and throw it at you. And I throw a whatchamacallit at you. 
right in the eye, I get it. So I say to you, listen, you big baboon. Who's a big baboon, Gillis, I say? You are, you weasel, I say. Well, if that's the way you feel, beat it. Go on, take your wife and your kid and your turkey and your stuff. Okay, I'm gone. You know, if that's the way it's going to be, Riley, we better call this dinner off. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you, Gillis. Well, so long, pal. So long, chum. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, we need some more rivets, Gillis. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, quitting time, Riley. Yeah, okay. You know, I sure am glad we called off our Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, much better we should each have a quiet dinner with no headaches, except our wives. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, Hello, I... Hey, Riley. Riley. Mr. Stevenson. What's he doing in the shop? Riley, I want to thank you again for your invitation for Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, 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 uh... <laughs> Why, you double-crossing snake... And, Gillis, I want to thank you for your invitation, too. <laughs> Gillis, why, you're a bigger snake than I am. Well, what's the trouble, boys? So, that's why you wanted to get out of our joint dinner. Well, what about you? Now, wait a minute, boys. Were you planning to have Thanksgiving dinner together? Well, yes, only I, uh, he, uh, we... Uh... Well, fine. That solves everything. I can accept both of your invitations at the same time. So go right ahead with your original plans and count me in. See you tomorrow at three. <laughs> What a revolting development this is. But, Jimsy, I thought your boss was coming here for dinner. No saccharine lips. <laughs> That's all changed now. We're all going to eat at Riley's. But Egbert's been invited to Artie Meyer's house. Good. Maybe it's better my boss don't see our Egbert. Things are tough enough. Well, all right, we'll go. Even if it is Riley's house, you can still drop a few hints about the foreman's job. Oh, no, that's out. Riley and me made the honorable deal. And Hinton wouldn't be croquette. <laughs> I guess you're right. It's not the honest thing to do. But I got a better plan. We're bringing a takey, and Riley's got a takey. But what do we need two takeys for? Why, yes, one'll be enough for seven people, especially the portions Riley serves. So I'll sell our gobbler and buy the boss a box of his favorite cigars. That'll put us in solid. Oh, Jimsy, you're so clever. <laughs> <laughs> but, Dumplin, it's so simple. Gillis is bringing a turkey and we got a turkey. What do we need two turkeys for? Well... Yes, it is a lot, and today with the food shortage... Sure, so I'll sell our turkey and buy the boss a cigar lighter. It's patriotic to save food, and the boss will love me for that lighter. Well, now wait, uh, Riley. Uh, uh, <laughs> poor Gillis, I bet he'd love to borrow my brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't like it, Riley. It's underhanded, and it... Well, it's just not fair. Now, I know, Peg, but you don't understand. This is business. And the business world, it's, it's like a jungle. Beast against beast. That's the only way to get ahead. So don't you worry. When I'm foreman, you'll give thanks that you're married to a beast like me. <laughs> we'll hear the second act of The Life of Riley in a moment. Say, Ken, millions are asking for Prell, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. Of course, Prell's popular for two reasons. First, Prell leaves hair more radiant than any soap or soap shampoo because Prell can't leave a dulling soap film. Second, Prell's a wonder for unsightly dandruff. Yes, Prell removes such dandruff in as little as three minutes. Examinations by a group of doctors proved it. In case after case, even stubborn dandruff was controlled by only two Prell shampoos a week. And that handy Prell tube's popular, too. No messy jars, no waste or spill. A little makes mountains of lather. So for hair radiantly clean, hair free of unsightly dandruff, ask for... P-R-E-L-L Prell shampoo. Leaves hair radiant, gleaming bright. Not a bit of dandruff is in sight. Comes in a tube, handy too. P-R-E-L-L Prell shampoo. Bye, Prell. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Well, 
got the table all set. Oh, it looks beautiful, Babs. Hey, where's the carving knife? Oh, here it is, Pop. I wonder if it's sharp enough. Uh, Junior, bend your head down. Riley! Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, don't get excited. I just want one hair. Now, who left the door open like that? Oh, shut it back. No, 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 no. Leave it open. Well, why, Daddy? Well, Gillis's hands will be so full carrying his turkey, he won't be able to ring the bell. Oh, don't be silly. Shut it, Bab. Say, I almost forgot the champagne. Where's the champagne? Oh, he- here, Daddy. Junior, Junior, empty the ashes out of the bucket and fill it with ice. I'll put the champagne in it. I want the boss to have everything like he has at home. Oh, this champagne's great stuff. Imported from San Diego. <laughs> oh, that must be the Gillis's. Happy Thanksgiving, folks. Oh, Mr. Gillis. Come in, come in, Gillis, old pal. I hope you brought your appetite. Don't worry, Riley. I'll gorge up my quota of vittles. Hello, Mr. Gillis. Hi. Gillis, you're alone? Oh, no. Honeybee went in through your kitchen. Through the... Oh, naturally. Mmm, <laughs> boy, that turkey smells delicious. Oh, yeah, I smell it, too. That aroma sure has a wonderful odor. Well, I... I don't smell any turkey. Well, Peg, where's your nose? Why, the air is reeking with it. It certainly is. Mmm, <laughs> pardon me while I drool. <laughs> well, I better give Honeybee a hand in the kitchen. Oh, oh there's Mr. Stevenson. Yeah, now, remember, Gillis, no hitting about the job. Not a word. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Oh, hello, Mr. Stevenson. Come Hi, here. boys. Hi there, Chief. Well, Junior, Barbara. Mr. Stevenson, Hello, let me you? take your coat. Thank you, Barbara. Here, sit down, boss. Make yourself at home in my chair. Uh, what Gillis means is make yourself at home in my chair. In my home. I, uh, hope I'm not too early, Riley. Oh, no, you're just in time. We were all waiting for you, including the turkey. <laughs> ah, turkey. Just the thought of it makes my mouth water. Riley, give the boss a blotter. Oh. <laughs> well, should we sit down, Peg? Huh? Yes, dear, I'm all right. Oh, okay. oh hello there, everybody. Hello, Mr. Hello, honey bee. <laughs> Stevenson, charm, simply charm. Pleasure to see you, Mrs. Gillis. Well, shall we sit down, honeybee? Yes, by all means, darling. Well, let's see. You sit here, Mr. Stevenson. Thank you. And uh, let me see now. Honey Bee and Mr. Yeah. Gillis yeah. there. Yeah. And Ronnie sits there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Babs and Junior. Oh, yeah, uh, here, Mr. Stevenson. Here, Mr. Stevenson, you, you do the coffin. Huh? Oh, no, no. I couldn't, Riley. Oh, go on. You're good at cutting salaries. Try it on a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Well, I'm all set. Bring on the turkey. Okay, bring on the turkey. Yep, bring on the turkey. All right, honeybee, bring on the turkey. Uh, Say, where is it, Peggy, dear? Why, in the kitchen where you put it. I I didn't put it anywhere. Where'd you put it, darling? Something wrong, folks? <laughs> Why, yeah, boy, boy, don't worry, boss. We'll track it down. Gillis, where's the turkey you brought? Oh, I didn't tell you. I didn't bring any. You... You, you didn't? Well, where's the turkey you had? Oh, uh, well, 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 that's right. I, I didn't tell you. We ain't got it. Oh. <laughs> you see, we thought you were... Oh, oh dear. Oh, my. <laughs> Well, uh, now, uh, well... Jimsy, run down to the delicatessen and see if you can get some turkey. Hurry! Okay, sit tight. Uh, excuse me a minute, folks. Uh, uh Riley, uh, say something. Say, uh, uh, I read in a magazine once that sardines have got more vitamins than all... <laughs> How's uh, school coming, Junior? Oh, uh, uh, fine, Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> nice weather for Thanksgiving, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> wonder how Cornell make out against Penn. Uh, I-, I was thinking of going to see the new play at the Madison tonight, but I hear it's a turkey. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, come now, folks. Just because there's been a little mishap with the turkey doesn't mean we all have to be so glum. Who wants this carving knife? <laughs> oh, you 
You can't imagine how embarrassed I am, Mr. Stevenson. Well, please don't be. Worse things can happen. Yeah, the, the boss is right. Why, why, if somebody walked in now and saw us sitting here like this, they'd think this was a funeral. Speak for yourself, John. <laughs> Digger, it's you. Yes, it is I. Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> You're looking fine. Very hungry. Uh, why didn't you ring the bell, Digger? Oh, I came in through the kitchen. You see, I... Uh, this is my boss, Mr. Carl Stevenson. Boss, Digger O'Dell. How do you do? Carl Stevenson. Well, as I live and breathe. If you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> Glad to know you, sir. One of my dearest cronies was your late uncle, Rufus Q. Stevenson, the pawnbroker. Oh, yes, yes, good old Uncle Roof. A fine man. He once helped me out of a hole. <laughs> I've always regretted I couldn't do the same for him. Uh, we, uh, we were almost going to have a little Thanksgiving dinner, Digger. Ah, Thanksgiving. My favorite holiday. Started by the pilgrims, one of whom was my ancestor, Roger O'Dell. Really? Ah, yes. He started the family profession, a stone's throw from Plymouth Rock. Gee, a pilgrim. The very day they landed, they were attacked by a ferocious band of Iroquois. And Roger O'Dell personally made 50 Indians bite the dust. Uh, wait a minute, Digger. He killed 50 Indians? No, the others killed them, but O'Dell made them bite the dust. <laughs> Well, toodaloo. Oh, we'd, we'd ask you to stay for dinner, Mr. O'Dell. Oh, no, thank you. My family and I were invited at the last minute to be the guests of J.J. Gabriel. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's the town's biggest undertaker. Oh, yes, he does a land of his business. <laughs> uh, you're eating dinner at his place? I have to, for business reasons. Mm. So I brought you over our turkey, all cooked and ready to serve. Digger! You brought us a turkey? Yes, I laid it out in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, Digger, you saved my life. I did? <laughs> well, after all, it's a holiday. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. O'Dell. I really must go. Gabriel is waiting for me outside. Well, that's Gabriel now. And you know me. When Gabriel blows his horn, I come a running. <laughs> well, cheerio. I'd better be shoveling off. Boy, Digger sure saved our life with this turkey, eh? Uh, Gillis, Gillis, can't you eat quieter? You sound like a super chief. On oh, my word, Mrs. Riley, I haven't had a meal like this in years. Neither have we. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that's no way to talk. Don't yell at the boy, Dumplin'. He only means we can't eat like this every day with the salary I get on the job I got now. Uh, uh, have some more of my turkey, boss. Huh? Hey, Riley, no hint. Huh? Here, boss, have one of my radishes. Uh, no, thank you, really. I... How about a little more pie? Here, take mine. No, take mine. I ain't bitten into mine yet. More coffee, boss? <laughs> Please, boys, not another morsel. All I want now is to fall into a soft chair and smoke a good cigar. Oh, well, here, smoke a whole box with my love. Well, yeah, yeah, well, light him with this nifty lighter, right from my heart. Well, boys, this is very nice of you, but you really shouldn't have done it. I, I don't expect any presents. Oh, forget it, boys. <laughs> well, shall we go in the other room? Yeah, let, no, 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 wait. L let's, uh, let's drink a toast. Good eh? idea. What do we drink to? Uh, let's uh, drink to the health and happiness of the new foreman. Oh, then you know, Riley. Well, I... Sort of guess. <laughs> you know too, Gillis? Well, I know what a great executive you are, boss. So there's only one man you could pick. Get ready, honeybee. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, I'm glad you men like the man of my choice. So here's luck to the new foreman, Joe Beamish. That's a Joe, Joe Beamish. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Beamish? Joe Beamish? Yes, Joe Beamish. Fine fellow. Oh, Gillis, hand me that ashtray, please. Get it yourself. <laughs> Don't be rude. Uh, something wrong? Riley, what's the matter? What's the matter? 
make him so famous, Corbin. After all we did for you, some gratitude. What Riley's saying, I'm endorsing in spades, you. <laughs> now, wait. When you open up the plant and you couldn't get no help, who gave up a good job to go and work for you? We did. But where was Joe Beeman? Go on, Riley. Give it to him good. Right in front of me. <laughs> but Riley... And during the war, we could have gotten better jobs for more pay, but we stuck with you. And where was Joe Beamish then? He was flying a plane over Germany. Germany. That's a fine place to be with a war going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. That Joe Beamish. The one who was wounded? Yes. He's out of the hospital now. And he uses that artificial leg just fine. Besides that, he has seniority and he's a fine worker. You couldn't have picked a better man, boss. I'm sorry if I've disappointed you fellas. Oh, you didn't, Mr. Stevenson. What Riley says, I agree with him. Honest, I, I ain't disappointed either. Joe Beamish deserves the job. That's the way to talk, dear. I don't mind if you're not foreman. Oh, sure. Why should you mind, Dumplin? After all, you've got plenty to be thankful for as it is. You're still young and good looking. You got a son who's handsome. You got a daughter who's gorgeous. And you got a husband who. who if there's any more turkey left, I'll have to watch him a caller. <laughs> Rallies will be back in just a moment. The Wonder Shampoo. That's what they say about Prell, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. From Fairlawn, New Jersey, Mrs. P.S. Keller writes... I am so pleased with the results of my Prell shampoo. Even in our hard water, Prell really worked wonders. Left my hair clean and soft, nicely manageable. Yes, one trial, and you'll agree, Prell's a wonder for two reasons. First, Prell removes unsightly dandruff quickly. Second, Prell leaves hair radiantly lovely. Bye, try. P-R-E-L-L, Prell shampoo. Leaves hair radiant, gleaming bright. Not a bit of dandruff is in sight. Comes in a tube, handy too. P-R-E-L-L, Prell shampoo. Well, it, it ended up a nice dinner after all, didn't it, honey bee? Well, simply scrumptious. And even if we ain't foreman, we're still friends. Hey, Riley? Through thick and thin. Yes, Sir Gillis, and believe me, they don't come any thicker than us. <laughs> We'll invite you to join us again next week to hear the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. William Bendix can currently be seen in the Paramount picture Where There's Life. The script is by Reuben Shipp and Alan Lipscott. Mrs. Riley's Paula Winslow, Digger O'Dell is John Brown. The Life of Riley is produced and directed by Irving Bracker. The Duchess' daughter, her finery looked just so. She washed them all as you want her, with wonderful ivory snow. Ah, wonderful ivory snow. The soap that's so kind to your hands, you just know it's kind to sheer nylons and dainty lingerie. And your hands will tell you why ivory snow keeps lovely washables lovely longer. Prove it. This week, wash your dishes with ivory snow. When you see how it pampers your hands, you'll really know it's extra kind of fine fabrics. There's no other soap like it. Ivory Snow's the only soap, both ivory mild and in granulated form. Make suds instantly and lukewarm, even in cool water. Your hands will tell you why Ivory Snow keeps pretty lingerie and other nice things lovely longer. Oh, wonderful Ivory Snow. S-N-O-W. This is Ken Carpenter reminding you that for radiantly clean, lovely hair, get the shampoo in the tube. P-R-E-L-L, Prell Shampoo. And listen again next week when Prell brings you the life of Riley. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.